And Lord, right now, if there's anyone here at this church who don't know you personally, we especially pray for them that this will be the place that they'll come to know you and leave here different. Lord, we ask that you bless uh, the singing. And Lord, when it comes time to preach, and I just get me out of the way and let the Holy Spirit take over because he's the greatest teacher that we have watch over us and guide us give us a good day today a good night rest tonight and a better day tomorrow we thank you for all that you do for us and for your love for these things we ask in Christ's name amen
That was good. That was pretty.
your bless each and every one here. Bless this offering, Lord, and use it to the betterment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Mm.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Y'all done a super job then. I would say you hit a grand slam in baseball, if that's what we would call that. If you have a copy of God's Word with you today, I'd like for you to turn to John chapter 14. And uh, we're going to be looking at another verse or two in the book of Revelation. Um, so uh, just have this ready when we get ready. If you don't mind, stand one more time as we read God's Word. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And then over in the book of Revelation, chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth would pass away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You may be seated You know, I've always enjoyed reading about heaven. Somebody asked me a long time ago, what's your hometown? I said, well, it's going to be heaven. But I grew up in East Rockingham. But I said, my hometown is going to be heaven. Look forward to that day when all of our troubles and sorrows are over with. Amen? Look forward to that day. But all my life I've heard people try to describe heaven, but they just don't seem to be able to describe it like the Bible does. And one of these days, those of us who know the Lord personally, who has a relationship with him, is going to get to see that place. And uh, we've got loved ones who's already there. They know what it's like. It starts off here in John's Gospel, let not your heart be troubled. Those six words bring me a lot of comfort. Just those six words. I don't have to be in trouble. That is really what those six words are really saying to us. Let not your heart be troubled. The next part of the verse reveals this. You believe in God. It answers your question. And that demands an answer. Well, do you? There's only two answers to that question. Do you or do you not? Oftentimes, the first three verses of chapter 14 are read at funerals. 
I don't know how many times I've gone to the cemetery to help out or be in charge of a funeral service. And a lot of times you hear this chapter 14 read. I think of Reverend Tuttle. Uh, I've been to, you know, I think Wayne's preached more funerals than anybody in Richmond County. And he used this text quite often. As a matter of fact, he used it so much he could quote it. And that's when we normally hear this verse read, is it the funeral or at a cemetery? But it's really talking about heaven. And heaven is going to be a glorious place to those that are at the church or the cemetery, the words brings hope that our loved one is safe in the arms of Jesus. I've left there many a time. And I say to myself, I said, well, they there with Christ now. Of course, they've already been there, but you know how it is. Of all the funerals, and I've had a bunch of them, there's only been one that I've had that I wished I didn't have. I went and talked to this boy about the Lord, and I don't know if he's being sarcastic or what, but he just constantly said, no, no. I, if God wants me, he can have me. If he don't, it don't matter. And the boy, as far as I know, never got things right with God. And that has always bothered me. I've done my best. The other preacher that helped me out, he done his best. But as far as we know, that boy left here unprepared to meet God. And if that's the case, he certainly will never enjoy the streets of gold, will he? But you know, there's a day coming that, you know, we're all going to, if the Lord doesn't come back, and he's coming back, don't just keep that in mind that we're going to get to walk on the streets of gold. I mean, go. I was watching this thing on TV the other day. Down, they down there in Australia digging up gold. Dusty as it can be. And men will kill for gold. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of bad things happen because of gold. But just think, one day we're going to walk on it. We're going to get to walk on it. I'm looking forward to that. But these people that has died in the Lord, they've made it to heaven. They got new bodies now. They're not wore out. They're not feeble anymore. You know, there in Psalm 23, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley. You know, aren't you glad it didn't say, Yea, though we are in the valley? <laughs> In other words, we walk through it. There's nobody in heaven today feeble. There's nobody there having to use a walking stick. Nobody in a wheelchair. They're all healthy. They got new bodies. Bodies that will never wear out. And know that we got loved ones that has experienced that already. Never wear out. Throughout all eternity, our bodies will never run out. According to Revelation chapter 21, now this is what I've always liked. When I, I normally read this at the cemetery. Because these verses here is when it's all over with. Satan's cast away. He's gone. He won't bother us no more. There's a new heaven. It's eternity future. When all of God's children are at home, all of us, everyone there where I'm talking about been born again, they're there. And I love this. I, I, I couldn't tell you how many times I, I read this and it just brings joy to me. Listen to here. It said, and there should be no more tears. Have you ever cried over something that's bothered you? Death of a loved one, a home breaking up. Child sick, you're sick. Have you ever cried and shed some tears? 
they're not fun, are they? But, you know, the only tears we're going to shed there is going to be happy tears. <laughs> when I get to heaven, when I get to heaven, I'm going to get to see my parents again. They won't be old, wore out, wrinkled up. They won't be that way. They're going to be healthy. They're going to be young. And I'm going to get to see them again, hug their necks. I got a brother over there. There were six of us kids, there's only five left, and I'm the only boy in the family now. But one day I'm going to get to go there, and I'm going to get to see loved ones. And I'm going to get to see people that I've met in church, friends I went to school with. Get to see. It's going to be a happy time. Have you ever been happy and cried? I grew up at this, right up the road here, East Rockingham and Free Will Baptist Church. And I remember those old saints of God up there, boy, they could shout. Woo, yeah. Lord, you didn't know whether to run or shoot them. <laughs> Scared to death. And there was a Miss Todd up there. She was a pretty heavy set woman. She wore those funny looking shoes. And she had stockings, but the stockings was rolled up there like a pair of socks. And every Sunday morning, she'd come in there and pat me on the back. Glad to see you back. Every Sunday. And I can remember when she got happy. Ooh, you talking about somebody that could holler. Scare you to death. She might have been old and heavy, but she could move. I'm telling you, the spirit was her. And we had another lady named Ethel Hall or Ethel Spivey. I don't know why they done it. You didn't know which one to call her. Either she was a spivey or a hog, okay? And I'll tell you this. One Sunday, the spirit was moving. And she wore a wig. <laughs> and she threw her head back and the wig come off. <laughs> and her grandson was sitting behind, beside her. He got up and went and got the wig and put it back on her head. And she hollered another, amen, had it, and it came off again. And I could see Daryl as he just slid down to the other end of the pew. She never knew what happened. And I can remember another time when she got happy, her and Addie Stewart, they rode around together. She had one of them old, old, old mercuries and it smoked, it killed millions of mosquitoes. And Mickey's Amico down there, you might remember it right down there. A highway patrolman watched her one day and she ran right through the stop, never stopped. And he chased her to her house. She wasn't turning off the road. She thought he was going to be getting fresh with her. And he said, ma'am, you know you ran that stop sign there? She said, yeah, I never stopped there. <laughs> no, I ain't never stopped at that stop sign. Now, don't tell me that the Lord don't take care of people. But I was there one Sunday morning, and they got to cutting up. And I could hear now the Holy Ghost is here. I'm heading down to the altar because he's going to hit in a few minutes. And she'd go down there. It was real. Yeah. I can remember that as a child. These people loved the Lord, and they did not mind one minute to holler a hallelujah or glory to God. And even throw your wig off. But the only tears we're going to shed up there is going to be happy tears. Oh, I haven't seen you a long time. Come here. They're going to be more bear hugs up there in heaven than you've ever seen in your life. People we've never met. And the other thing I like about this passage of scripture here is this. And I like the way it's put in order here. Did you notice the first thing that won't happen there? No more death. Wonder why that was put first. He could have said no more tears, no more sorrow. He could have put that at the very end, but he wanted us to know right off the bat. There's no dying up there. We will never die. I've told this before. And I still mean it. If God ever reveals to me where I'm going to die at, I'm not going there. 
But there's no dying in heaven at all. But it's very interesting that that's the first thing in Revelation and this thing that he talks about in the life. There's no more dying there. And that is so important to us because every one of us dread the thought of dying. I like to be the last person on earth to die. I like to see how it all turns out, but I already know how it's going to turn out. Now, I've got a sister, Billy Gill. When she dies, she wants to be kept out 45 days. She wants a new outfit put on every day. She wants the president to make a video about how he's going to mourn her death. <laughs> you got to know my sister. But it's amazing that there's no death there. It's not even mentioned. There's no more sorrow there. Oh, have we had sorrow? Have you ever had sorrow? Oh, I hate that. Never have liked that. Let me tell you something. The hardest thing for me when I do a funeral is see that family come through that back door. That's the hardest thing. I have to bite my tongue, my lips, or something. Because I just about lose it. Because, you know, when we bring them in, we're going to take them out, and that's, that's, that's it. And I see the, the looks on their face, the hurt, the sorrow, that somebody that they have loved for many years are taken away. I remember when my, my father passed away, I, I think my mama was numb the whole time. I don't even think she knew what was going on. Because the love of her life, it was winding down to those last few moments. It, at least she could go up and look at him. But she knew when they took him through that door, she wouldn't see him again until she got on the other side. So it hurt. And there was deep sorrow. But there won't be none of that over there. You won't even hear nobody dying up there. There won't be no breaking up of homes up there. Oh, that's a terrible thing to have your home broke up. It's an awful thing. I wouldn't wish that on nobody. It's a terrible thing when that happens. But that won't happen up there. All that's done away with. Another thing. You won't hear nobody dying up there with cancer. Cancer will be banned from up there. They won't be nobody crying from a bad back. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing like a bad back. I've shed a many a tears over a bad back. Arthritis. All that's banned from up there. There's no more pain. There won't be no eye problems. We won't even face temptation no more. That's tough, isn't it? That's the biggie, isn't it? Down here on the earth, you turn around there, where you say there's temptation everywhere. I go to Walmart. Now, Walmart is, by the way, my favorite store, okay? I can't help it. <laughs> Linnell got my checkbook one time. She, going, she said, Carl, you've lost your mind. Every one of your checks has got Walmart, Walmart, Walmart. She said, what do you do at Walmart? I said, I buy fishing stuff. I mean, once in a while she might see one with food line. Then she knows I've been to the cookie store. But one of these days, all these Things will be done away with. There'll be no more temptation. Because I'm going to tell you, oh Lord have mercy. Don't go to Walmart late at night. That's when all the freaks come out. I will never forget the night that Nell got sick and I had to go out there. And I was looking at all this medicine. I turned around and there was a creature looking at me. I thought I was in the twilight zone. I mean, it was all, he was that, this, I could almost kiss him. And he probably was thinking, I'd like to kiss him. 
purple hair, spikes in it, teeth missing. And I said, my Lord, where am I at? And then I've seen ladies out there with more hanging out than hanging in. Now I'm telling you, it's a terrible thing. But we won't be tempted up there. All that will be gone. Here's what I like. Did you notice it says, for all former things have passed away. You know what that means? They have died. You ever heard anyway? Where's so and so? He passed away. Where's Tom at? He's passed away. Well, all these things that I mentioned, they've passed away. They've died. They're gone. They won't be allowed to go up there. Let's talk about heaven for a while. That's my subject today. Let's talk about heaven. There used to be a song that we used to sing a long time ago called Build My Mansion Next Door to Jesus. Now, I don't like that song. I tell you now, I don't like it because if your mansion is built beside Jesus, that may mean mine's built a little farther down the road and I don't like that. (laughs) And see, the problem is when we read this, we don't understand what it says. It says, in my father's house, one house, are many abiding places. We can all be together in God's house. Don't you know that's a big house? I do not want to live in a motel room 12 by 12. I don't like it, never have liked it. I like to be around people. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're one of those people that's hard to be in a crowd, you're not that friendly, you just stay away, buddy, you're going to be miserable in heaven. I guess I can say it like, you're going to have to get saved again. Now, I don't believe in being saved again. But you're going to have to learn to deal with people because it's going to be a happy place. Do you like to be around people that can't smile, can't talk to you? You tell them a joke and they don't laugh. I don't like to be around people like that. I can't. I get old man alive. Somebody may wonder, and I know some of you ladies wonder why I don't eat that much down here. I love to run my mouth. I do. I love to talk. Because this is the only time I get to see all of us together. Don't think I can't eat. You can look and tell I had not missed many meals. But I love to be around people. And just think, when you get to heaven, you'll get to see those heroes that you've heard about. I'm going to sit there and talk. I love Timothy. I'm going to get to sit there and talk to him. I'm going to get to talk to Joshua. It's going to be a wonderful time up there. So I'm looking forward to that. But like I say, I don't like that song, Build My Mansion Next Door to Jesus. It just rubs me wrong. But let's talk about heaven. That's where we all... Amen. The first thing I want to say is this, what heaven is about is this. Everyone there came by the same way. And I want to tell you, there's some knuckleheads out there. There's a thousand ways to go to heaven. I'm telling you right now, those folks won't make it where we're going. This is the one thing that puts everybody on the same level. You go into heaven only one way, that through the shed blood of Jesus Christ who died on the cross, rose again, and you put your trust in him as your savior. You go into heaven. That's how you know it. And I know it. I'm trusting him. There's only one way, not a thousand ways. You must be born again as Jesus said it. And everyone there will have had that born again experience. There's not many ways. There's just one way. Your goodness 
as a person is not good enough. You know, it doesn't matter how good you are. You can't go into heaven because, oh, he's a good person. Oh, she's a good. You don't go in like that. You go in through Jesus. He said, no one cometh through the Father except through me. Thank God, January the 4th, 1976, I seen myself as a condemned human being on the road to hell, and then I seen the light. My name was recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank God that Jesus don't have an eraser on it. Because if he did, I'd have been erased many times. But it's permanently, it's forever. The day you became a born again Christian, do you remember where it took place at? Do you remember where you got saved? Was it at home? Was that a church meeting? Or did somebody come by and witness to you and led you to Christ? You ought to re remember all of that. You may not remember the exact date, but you ought to remember the time and year that somebody told you about Christ and you accepted him as your Savior. Oh, it's going to be a glorious time when we get, because everybody went the same way. That day should be a special day because your name was recorded and heaven has set a plate, a dinner plate for you because they are expecting you. Did you know you had a name plate over there with your name on it? You know, we're going to sit down one day and have a big dinner with God. We're going to all be there sitting there because heaven is expecting our arrival. Did you notice that it didn't say post pair? It says prepare. <laughs> he's, he's expecting us. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful place. Let's talk about heaven. I get to see the saints of the Bible there. Now, Jerry has been <clears throat> in Sunday school talking about some of the men and women of the Bible. We're going to get to meet them. Jerry, I, 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 the, the, one of the best lessons I remember, Jerry, we were talking about Jacob's sons. They were scoundrels. I never thought of them that way. And when I get to heaven, I want to meet them. I'm going to tell you something. Jerry Watkins said, y'all were some mean boys. <laughs> but you had a good father. I don't understand how you got here. <laughs> I said, according to Jerry Watkins, y'all were scoundrels. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of scoundrels up there that got saved, though, won't they? I expect Nathan Grant can name a lot of people that he locked up and said, they got things right. They in heaven now. <laughs> but I'm telling you, we get to see those Bible heroes there. I remember as a little boy, my daddy used to sit there and tell me about the stories in the Bible. He loved to talk about the Bible. And he could put it down so you could just enjoy it. He talked to me about David, how he killed Goliath. He said Goliath was just a bully. And he made fun of God's people. And God said it was time to shut his mouth. And he sent little David down there, little boy, to beat a grown man. And then there was Moses, how he went down to Egypt and how he delivered God's people. I'm going to get to see Moses, really get to see him. <clears throat> he won't be Charleston Heston. I hope he favors him. I might be a little disappointed because every time I've ever movie I ever seen, Charles has, and I think of Moses. You remember the movie that came on Midway? You know, he was an airplane pilot and all that. I said, Boy, Moses sure has changed since the last time I've seen him. But I hope he sort of favors Charleston Heston because I always pictured Moses like that. But I'll get to see Moses, I get to talk to Moses. <clears throat> I get to talk to Paul and Timothy, all the people that I've studied. There are many things we're going to like about being up there. We won't be in a hurry there, for time won't matter anymore. 
Sometimes I hate a watch. I got to be here at a certain time. <clears throat> but it won't matter up there. You know, in, in, in eternity, there's no clocks. <clears throat> we can spend hours, days talking to somebody. Go see, we we go, we go be in no hurry. We ain't got to be at a certain place. <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to enjoy because I like to run my mouth. I'm going to ask Moses, why didn't you talk to the rock instead of striking it? Joshua, I never found anything in God's word that God ever had to punish you. How did you manage to do that? Enoch, you walked 300 years with God. How did you do that? And you never died. I like to ask them that because I want to know. <clears throat> and in eternity, I have time to do it. Another thing... There won't be no doctor appointments there. <laughs> you have one of you should say amen to that. <laughs> you know, when I go to the doctor, first thing he say, you still living? <laughs> How much weight you lost the last time you've been here? I said, that's none of your business. Every time I get on the scale, I say, they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. After three and a half, sometimes four spins, you know, I have to, well, okay. But we don't have to worry about no doctor's appointments. Because it says this, there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be doctors in heaven. There'll be doctors there, but they've been born again. We won't need their services. <clears throat> now, my daughter-in-law was a doctor. Sometimes I call her on the phone. I said, Mary Kathy, this, this is about me. What's this? And she'll tell me. I call her back. Some other, Mary Kathy, this is going on. I get some free medical. Y'all can't do that. <laughs> but when I get to heaven, I ain't going to have to have the service of a doctor because I'm going to have the best physician. And besides that, we won't get sick. And another thing, they no need of a funeral director no more. There won't be no funeral homes in heaven. I tell you, I think we've gone to too many funerals, haven't we? We won't ever have to go to them more once we cross over on the other side. Because the Bible says there shall be no more death. Hallelujah for that. I won't have to stand by a grave. Say a few words over some folks. You know, I was thinking the other day, um, I had a lady here at the church who was 101 years old. That's, that's remarkable. Most of us never make it that far, and, and most preachers don't ever get to preach a funeral with somebody that's lived that long, especially one that has lived that long and knew the Lord. But there won't be no death there. There won't be sickness because none of it's allowed there. Now here's the other part. If heaven is all good, like the Bible tells us that it is, which I believe, then hell must be as bad as as the Bible tells us. Oh, it got to be a terrible place. I don't know of a soul that's ever come up. I just think I'd go to hell. Now, I've known some men to come up and tell me they live in it. I've known some women to come up and say, I live in it. Me and Linnell know who I'm talking about. I, we was dear lady at church at Bethel. She had... She was dying, and he said, there's no way she can go to hell. I said, explain that. He said, because she's lived in it all of her life. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have to know the situation, which you don't, and I ain't going to tell you. But, um, but she had. 
I bet you she's done Toyota commercials jumping up and down in heaven when she got there because she had always lived a life of, it was just bad. And then lastly, I'm going to go on to do this and then I'd be lastly. I think about all of our people that has gone on. They've already met the Savior. They've already met him. They see what he looks like. You know, I can remember there in the bed, I slept in an old single bed, and I can remember when school started, Mama come in there and she, come on, son, got to get up and go to school. I remember that. A lot of times she'd come, come on, son, got to get up, it's time to go to church. I mean, go to Sunday school, or, you know, to go to school. She did that a few times during Sunday to school too. But when I get to heaven, I believe Jesus is going to come and come on. Get up. You've made it home. This is heaven. Ooh, boy, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have a ball. And I think about those that have gone on before us. They have already experienced that. They've got to meet Jesus face to face. They done walk down Hallelujah Square. Everybody goes to heaven the same way. We get to see the saints of God in the Bible. Our loved ones have already met the Savior. And lastly, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to go to heaven? It's better than the other alternative, isn't it? And I want to see Jesus, the one who died on the cross and purchased my salvation. And it's a salvation that lasts through eternity. Oh, I love to talk about heaven. Are you ashamed of being a Christian? I'm, I'm certainly not. We're going to stand here in a few minutes. Brenda, come on up. You and Janice and Jerry. I'm going to ask something to the congregation that I've never asked before. If you love the Savior like you say you do, and you are trusting him as your savior. As we sing, let's come up to the front of the church and pray. Let's just see. If you can't stand these empty pews, these three right here. Because one of these days, we'll get to go home and be with the Lord. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And I'm not ashamed of my Savior, what he's done for me and what he's got waiting for me. Won't you come? Okay, Miss Brenda.